Thanks, Tony. The next speaker is Bob Long. He'll be representing the Warsaw Police Department, but I think more than that, uh, Bob and Terry uh, were best of friends, so I'm sure Bob will be speaking uh, as his friend more than anything else. Bob? Well, if Justin didn't crush my glasses, I'll be able to do this. Hi, my name is Robert W. Long. I'm a sergeant with the Warsaw Police Department. And it is my distinguished honor to stand here before you today. And deliver this to Sergeant Polston. He was my friend my coworker, and my hunting buddy. And you have to forgive me if I have to stop and pause because this is going to be difficult. I know that you've all been touched in some way by OP. You're gathered here because of your love and your admiration for a fine human being. In our lives, we usually only get the chance to meet a few truly honorable and worthy people who we are able to remember and say, I am a better person for having known them and allowing them into my life. OP was one of those truly inspiring people. Everyone I know who becomes a police officer takes the job to make a difference in people's lives. We all take the job with high expectations of what we are going to accomplish. And most police officers love their jobs and would not consider doing anything else. We are the ones in the arena. We're in the arena of the public eye, no matter what. Good, bad, indifferent. I'm here to tell you about a man in that arena. And that is Sergeant Terry Polston. It's tough. Thought it'd be easier than this, but it's not. Terry came to the Warsaw Police Department in 1982. We worked together. We were on the same shift. This is a man who in 1992 made a decision to start teaching D.A.R.E. to the children of this community. And I will never forget going to a meeting at the department in 1989, along with then Corporal Terry Polston, and he was the corporal on my shift. And we gathered to hear about a new concept in teaching. It was called Drug Abuse Resistance Education. While in that meeting, I remember thinking and later telling Corporal Polston, this would be a perfect job for him. This new concept placed a sworn police officer in full uniform into the classroom with sixth graders to be a role model and to try to deter, deter them from using drugs. Now there's a quotation from a man named John Maxwell. He's a pastor, leadership trainer, and author. And the quotation is, people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Everyone here today has a living testimony to how much OP cared. And I would ask at this time that we take a minute to have all his D.A.R.E. students, past and present, in attendance, to stand. Please remain standing.
And then I would ask those who were touched or helped by Terry to also stand. Please remain standing. And lastly, I would ask all those who considered him their friend. And I know it's kind of hard to stand up twice. <laughs> to stand. <laughs> wow. Please be seated. Drug Abuse Resistance Education, DARE, has a lesson called Consequences. And when I went through the training, it was lesson number three. Okay? The lesson's based on choices we make and the consequences that come out of those choices that we make, good or bad. We all stand here now and look at the consequences of a life based on Officer Polston's choices. What an impact one man's life has made on this community. And as I'm standing here, I'm going to tell you that there's lots of kids that aren't here because they're away at college. So there could be more people here. I started this by talking about the job of a police officer working in the arena. One of my favorite quotes, I'm sorry, my quotations is by Theodore Roosevelt. And it's called, Man in the Arena. And it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again. Because there is no effort without error or shortcoming. But who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself for a worthy cause, who, at best, knows, in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who, at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring mightily so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. My friends, OP was victorious over cancer for six years. And most of us in this room never thought I'd get him. That's the positive approach he had in life. He never looked back. He just kept going forward, Mr. Positive. This is the Terry, the Chubb, the OP that I knew, respected, and loved. You who were touched by this man know what I'm talking about and how he affected and touched your life. On December 2nd, 2008, at 1.10 p.m., I was mad, sad, and glad. I was mad at losing my friend, my coworker, and my hunting buddy. And I was saddened by the void I instantly felt in this community. But I was glad because my buddy had told us over and over again that he wanted to go fast which he did and we should not grieve for him but to be happy because he would see Jesus and hear the words oh my good and faithful servant you have done well OP was also looking forward to seeing his dad Porter who preceded him in death we will miss his presence hugs positive attitude, and most of all, the hearty laugh. 